Is there any relevance of native speaker norms? That's a question for tephalologists. Is it better to focus on form or to focus on forms? That's a question for tephalologists. If you use a textbook, is your classroom authentic? Or should your approach be more learner-centric? From feedback to learner autonomy, we'll discuss it all on Tephalology. Welcome back to the uh, Tephalology podcast, a podcast all about teaching English as a foreign language and related matters. So I'm Matt. I'm Matthew. And today we have a, we don't have Rob today. Rob is, can't be with us today. Yeah. But in his cat related, uh, cat related issues, um, he has a lot of cat related (laughs) issues, um, but in his place we have, um, the one and only, uh, Thomas Farrell. Delighted to be there. <laughs> Thanks for asking me. And um, this I'm glad I'm replacing a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, he's a cat lover, our <laughs> Rob. Um, um, I mean, yeah. Today, I mean, usually we kind of have a plan for our episodes, but mm-hmm. but today we don't. Um, maybe that's the best way to we've, do these we've things. We've been intending for years now to do a like a, a dog me style podcast episode where what? we go in cold and we don't have any plans. Yeah, yeah. And I think, but I think. Tom, you're probably a good guest to have on for that sort of thing. <laughs> From cats to dogs. <laughs> yeah. And we've already, I mean, we've, we've been together now for about 30 minutes and we've already had some very interesting uh, discussions. Mm-hmm. So I guess we'll just carry on in that same... <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll just carry on in that same vein, really. Um, yeah. We um, both, uh, Matt and I, attended your presentation on Friday. Okay. Just a few days ago. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, do you have any comments? Yeah, uh, well, actually, one thing I'd like to say is the, the talk that you gave on Friday is, it seemed based on an article, or a, a, is it an article or a book chapter? A book. A book. Um, I've used a, ver- of, I think it's a chapter or an article, um, where, where you go through the, those, is it six or seven different? Five. Five. <laughs> different types of levels You were, you of were paying attention, <laughs> weren't you? <laughs> I filled in a few in my head. Um, but I've used that for, for um, preparing some of the instructors on my program to do a reflective task oh. over a semester. Excellent, yeah. And one thing they discuss is which, which of those five kind of interests them most. Yes. Would you like, would you care to guess which one was the most popular? Practice. Surprisingly not. What was it? It was the final one. Beyond practice. Beyond practice. Would that be related to job issues? Possibly. Possibly. Mm. Yeah. I think, I mean, maybe one thing to say is that all of these teachers teach on a a very, what we call a very unified course, where um, the course is kind of set, and so they don't have too much Mm. input into the type of course. So maybe that's one reason why. And they've all been teaching the course for several years. Um, But yeah, I I was, actually, I was a bit surprised that they all went for beyond practice. Well, let's uh, tell your viewers what the five levels are. Yeah, so it's um, so it's Tom's framework for reflecting on practice and um, the three, <laughs> the uh, five levels. Well, um, when you okay, so level one is life history, uh, philosophy, philosophy. Yeah. philosophy okay, uh, level two beliefs, uh, level three theorizing, level four practice, and level five beyond practice. Yeah, yeah. If I was to imagine these as levels going up or down, that would be incorrect. These are yes, more kind of circular. circular. Uh, probably stages would be a better word for it. In fact, in the book, I put level slash stages. Okay. okay. And the reason I do that is because I think novice teachers would probably uh, begin at the philosophy level, who I am, because mm. that there, there would be more information for them to work with. Mm-hmm. Because at the practice level, they don't have a lot of practice, and probably they wouldn't mm-hmm. have a lot of... Uh, uh, teaching repertoire skills to call on at that time. This doesn't mean they can't do it. Mm-hmm. And the reason I answered your question about practice mm-hmm. is because I, I was interested in uh, reviewing the research in TESOL on the practices that encourage uh, TESOL teachers to reflect. And so I examined uh, uh, 68 journals, all the big journals in our field, Applied Linguistics, TESOL Quarterly, ELT Journal, you named them, every one of them. And I found 138 articles over the last seven years. I didn't study books, I, did, I didn't look at books, I didn't look at chapters, etc. And, and what I did was with the 138 articles, because it's an enormous amount of information, I thought, well, how am I going to pr- present this in any coherent fashion? So I ran the 138 articles through the framework, and I found that 47% of these articles mm. were connected 
to actually practice in theory, mm -hmm. and not beliefs. It was interesting. Beliefs mm -hmm. uh, yeah. were, 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 were a third mm -hmm. in, in that combination, and only 5% were beyond practice. Mm -hmm. So the context of what you're telling me is you're telling me that the context in which you do this is very, very important. Perhaps. I mean, an another thing I should say is that when these uh, teachers go off and actually do the task and write it up, they may end up doing that on practice rather than beyond practice. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's what I said to you about how they, what they identified as what they what interested the most was just sharing ideas in a in a right. in faculty development session. Right. I don't know what they can actually go off and reflect. Right. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and, and another reason for why I developed that framework was, and uh, I again I told you earlier in our private chat, <laughs> I got a grant from the Canadian government, great government for grants. <laughs> and and, and uh, part of the grant I used to uh, review all of the approaches within general education. And I find that many of the approaches were, were treating uh, reflection as a, in a retrospective role, like you know, what are you doing, etc. And, and uh, the, the inner life of the teacher was completely ignored mm. in many of them. And it's like this reflective bubble. Like, we're all sitting around the table looking at some issue that happens in our classroom, but we're not part of the issue. Mm -hmm. Yet we are part of the issue, and this is why I object to the action research focus on just on, on problems in the classroom. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, so I, I, I read, uh, I found a, a type of, of, of interview framework in cognitive psychology by some researchers that have part of this particular framework. And I took that and used it, and I explained that in my book where I got it as well. And, and I, I tried to bring it into TESOL. We don't have a framework, and, well, we didn't up until now have a framework <laughs> in TESOL. And so I wanted to bring the teacher more into it, into mm. the framework. And so from the result of my uh, analysis of, of these research articles, I have suggested that teacher education programs or development programs do what you, do what you just said there. That, that they emphasize more beyond practice the critical reflection in our field more and also the, the person behind the practice, the philosophy and, and the beliefs of, of, of uh, how you should teach and learn English as a second language. Yeah. So, something you mentioned on Friday night was that you, you talked about some newer movements such as the, um, I think it's called the exploratory teacher research or exploratory practice, yeah, I can't remember the, yeah, the terms yeah. but... Yeah, there are a few few kind of new new newish movements out there. Exploratory practice is one of them. Mm. It's kind of based on Freire's work in, in Brazil and and uh, I forget what his name was did it, and now somebody in the UK is doing it as well. But Dick Allwright was yeah, he one Dick of the, was did, yeah, yeah. And in fact, I had an interesting conversation with him at a conference about uh, how we would differ, and uh, I get I felt he was a bit irritated that. Uh, uh, somebody would come up with some other approach. By the way, that's mm. not my approach. Exploratory practice is his approach. Mm. And so what I w worry about is empire, uh, academic empire building, if you know what I mean. Mm. Ra and then the focus goes away from the teacher. It's all about teachers. And so I, I, did, I never established reflective practice. Right, I'm just yeah, trying to bring yeah. it into our, our, our TESOL field. And the reason is I think it's a very human way of, of, of looking at what we do. Uh, in our classroom, and it, it doesn't have to be, you know, I, the other uh, approach I talked about was uh, um, language teacher research, and and uh, I'm 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 working on a special edition of Tessel EJ. You're familiar with Tessel EJ on the web? Yeah, we've, yeah, I think yeah. I've come across it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. On second language teacher education, and uh, I'm going to I'm writing an a lead article. I'm the editor, uh, special editor. I read a lead article called uh, Second Language Teacher Education, Some Inconvenient Truths. I should <laughs> probably figure out what. And one section is going to be called Language Teacher Research, colon, uh, Enlightenment or the Final Crucifixion. Mm -hmm. mm. And this is what I worry about. It's like teachers have enough to do in their lives without being uh, uh, pushed to do research in their classroom. I believe that... Uh, uh, Colleagues who go on to get a PhD, which is a very no <laughs> noble uh, movement to do, can act as bridges mm. to colleagues in the yeah, classroom, yeah, yeah. and that's where you come in. And and uh, I, but you, I, as I was talking to Scott Thornbury a couple of weeks ago in Chicago, and in, in I was in Barcelona as well. He doesn't have a PhD, and and he's a he is a bridge. And uh, Jeremy Harmer, and so there's a lot of work we can do. But the thing is that, you know, teachers are already uh, up against it in the classroom with. You know, 
a lot of work to do if it's grading and writing or whatever. Mm. And so that's why, how I see myself. The, the reason I brought up the exploratory practice was because that, that seems to focus on this idea of, they, call, they talk about quality of life, yeah. researching with the learner. Yeah. And so that, that kind of seems to lessen the, the, um, the action research approach of looking for a problem. Well, I'm, yeah, not, I'm not sure. Yeah, though, but, yeah. Either am I, to be honest, and, and, and I let them go. But uh, it's it's. I th I think uh, we're all going up the same mountain, and there's room for everybody. Mm, yeah, if, yeah. If if yeah. if you're doing any type of research that furthers learning, I'm all for it, and that uh, gives voice to the teacher in the classroom, because the, the the teacher in the classroom is probably one of the last people on earth that anybody asks how they're feeling or how they're doing. <laughs> but yeah. everybody, but many people, uh, you know. Uh, give them a real hard time. I, I, I'm going to share something with you too. I was in a country that shall remain unnamed this year. <laughs> so we got to check <laughs> where was he. And, and I sat down with lunch with the CEO of a language school, right, who all during lunch berated teachers. Mm -hmm. And I was in total shock. And the director of the program just didn't say anything at all. Apparently used to it. And I, I, I was trying to be polite which can be difficult for me sometimes when <laughs> something is wrong. And I just said, well, I said, uh, I, I'm, I, from what the pattern of your conversation is that you don't trust teachers and you don't, maybe you don't like them. I said, well, why don't you come to my workshop and uh, maybe you can interact. I'm going to be interacting with them. You see what they're actually doing. And he, he wouldn't come. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's still this perception in our profession slash industry, you see where we're going with yeah, this, yeah, that, yeah. that uh, teachers are kind of pawns to, to, to be used mm -hmm. by administrators and, mm -hmm. and, and not uh, viewed as professionals. Part of the reason is that, you know, if you ask a teacher what, re what they are doing, they can't fully understand, uh, sorry, they can't fully explain what they're doing or why they're doing, but they're probably doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And so we can, pr reflective practice, why I like it is it, you can give them the tools to be able to, to, to explain not only to others, but to themselves, about what they're doing to become more confident teachers, doesn't mean they're going to change anything. Mm -hmm. So that, that model, that reflective practice model, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you have, I, I quoted Dewey, and I quoted, I, I mentioned his name, I mentioned Sean's name. I, I'm actually different than them. I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. How dare I mention their name? But you, 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 I see it in the literature, people cite Dewey, oh yeah, mm -hmm. reflected, and Sean. Mm -hmm. but, I worry that they cite these people without knowing their theoretical underpinnings and mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. what they stand for. For example, Dewey, his reflective approach to reflection is only problem-based. It's, it's to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. And when you engage in reflective practice, or on my hat, his reflective yeah. inquiry, <laughs> which I really love. Is that uh, a new hat? Though? That seems different <laughs> to the one... Uh... It's, a, it's a newer version. Yeah. Right, okay. I, it's cheaper, though. <laughs> Yeah, but, but, but he says you, 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 it's problem solving, and the problem must be solved. And, and the morals or mm -hmm. the, the ethics are, are, are separated from the methods. And I disagree with that. And Sean took it one step further. In he studied Dewey's reflective inquiry for his PhD, <coughs> which is interesting. He's phoning from the grave at the moment. <laughs> I don't want to answer that. <laughs> okay. I'll I'll leave, leave that. We'll leave that for a sec. We'll just... Oh, oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. So, so, uh, uh, and Sean uh, uh, got into the idea of reflection in action. In other words, while you're doing it. But Sean never worked much with teachers. But everybody cites him with, in education as such. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got that. I suggest that that, that uh, reflective practice is not problem based. Mm -hmm. That's where the philosophy comes in, or mm -hmm. beyond. You know, as as you were saying there, mm -hmm. and 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 even if it is a problem, the problem doesn't have to be solved. Sometimes we can't solve problems. But, but, but you don't repress it, and you, you say, well, okay, well, i look at this and see, maybe later it can be. But, so this is what we must be careful of, uh, replacing one set of checklists with another set of checklists in, in, in terms of, mm. of, of ritualizing reflective practice. I don't think it should be yeah, ritualized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of those, I mean, like, trying to link all of this together, one of those checklists that a lot of teachers in Japan have is this kind of minimum... Um, publications um, and that's kind of a thing for when when we're looking for jobs we need to have a certain amount of oh, yeah. publications do you think there's a tendency for teachers to kind of take a reflective um, insight that they get and then 
want to write it up all of a sudden as a, as a publication? I um, think they should. It's called sharing. Right, yeah. right. But, but the thing is that if you write it up for a publication, it depends on, 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 on how you actually look at the issue. There's the, you know, you've, you've, if it's for a, an academic journal, you're going to have reviewers mm. who mm. are going to look at so-called research, the big R and the small R. And, and many people, they ask for rigor in research. Mm. To me, rigor in research means rigor mortis. Mm. It, you know what I mean? You can get too much into it. So it all, if, but if you write it for a, a smaller journal or a magazine, that's a whole idea. But why, why, okay, first, before writing it up, why don't you go to a conference and present it? Yeah. And then yeah. you get more ideas and, and, and then talk to other groups of friends or teachers who are doing it as well. That's what it's, reflection practice is all about, one, two or three people. Mm. And then you, you, you take it and run. Mm. Yeah. I, I, maybe this might be an aside or a slight, uh, you know, I don't know, going off the top a little bit. But I was wondering, um, like reading what you say about reflective practice and inquiry, um, how, how, I'm, I don't know, do you know how common it is to people apply, to apply these same principles in other industries, in other mm, professions? Yes, actually, it's, 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 it's booming at the moment, mm -hmm. in, in, especially in, in, uh, in medicine, mm -hmm. uh, all, all branches of medicine and nursing, mm -hmm. and in law, apparently, uh, it's beginning to come in, mm -hmm. and uh, in, uh, in finance, mm -hmm. and my, my sister-in-law is working in finance, and I believe that my brother said that now she's been asked to engage in reflective practice, mm -hmm. and then uh, 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 doctors are asked to write a journal about, which is causes other issues as such about reflection. Mm -hmm. It's huge in the field of nursing. There's a guy called Chris Johns. He's a professor of nursing in the UK. I think it's Nottingham or not. And he's, he, 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 he's a real uh, interesting reflective practitioner. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was at a conference years ago in Toronto with him and Stephen Brookfield, mm -hmm. all in the same. And here I am giving a plenary and these two guys are in the audience. And I thought, it's just in the middle of it, I saw them. I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, but he works with cancer patients. Mm -hmm. And you know, reflection is brought into the nurses working with the cancer patient, mm -hmm. which is a real serious uh, side of life. Whereas I'm working with language students and mm -hmm. teachers which is a lot less, sorry to say, a lot less serious. Yeah. So yes, it's, 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 it's quite big. Mm -hmm. But what I worry about is that when you say reflective practice in any profession, we have a wink and a nod and we agree what it is. I mm. told you I, I, I checked those 138 articles. Well, 68 of those articles never defined reflective practice, which is worrying. It was like, yeah, I'm going to ask myself and my students to reflect. So I think... I think reflective practice in TESOL is there and in the professions, mm. but we have to start talking about what exactly do we mean by reflective practice. That's why I spent two years developing that framework, because mm. yeah. I've been at this 35 years. I, to be honest, I asked myself, what do I mean by reflective practice? Because I was doing it with, you know, I was, I was doing it basically by myself for many years, but, but then I, with others, and, and then mm -hmm. you, you, you kind of get into this routine, which is anti-reflection, believe it or not. And then I thought, no, reflection is good, but it needs reflection as well. So now, I don't know how many more years in the tank I have left, but now <laughs> I'm trying to get people within TESOL, when, yeah, t reflective practice, yes, I'm interested in it. They say, good. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you mean exactly by it? And, and, and some people want me to tell them what reflective practice is. And I can, mm -hmm. sure, I can tell them what I think it is in, mm -hmm. in their framework, but I think we have, you have to find out what you're comfortable with as well. Mm, yeah, but we have yeah. to be careful not to ritualize it. That's what I worry about. Not, and by the way, uh, mm -hmm. in the other professions, uh, they're worried about the same uh, 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 place that we've arrived at at the moment. I think now we have to consider more the person who's doing the reflection is connected to the, to, to, to the actual reflection on practice. That's the missing link in a lot of what we do in in in, uh, in Tesla and in education. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you say danger of ritualizing it, yeah. do you mean making it too formal? Uh, producing a checklist. Uh -huh. You know, uh, because administrators would love the checklist. Yeah. Uh, originally, do you, do you know why uh, reflective practice came came back in the eighties in education? Uh, there was a lot of teacher burnout and, and mm. the resurgence of interest in reflection by by Schoen's work. He worked with practitioners, not really teachers. But, but the idea that, well, wait a minute, uh, teachers, uh, this technical rationality approach to, to, you know, science will tell teachers what to do in the classroom. The scientists have never been in the classroom in their life, i.e. university professors. And so 
uh, uh, and then teachers were burnt out with these checklists. Mm -hmm. And so, but what we've morphed into this is because administrators want to see if you engage in reflective practice, will it improve teaching? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I, I forgot what I said Friday, but how can you improve something if you don't know what the something is in the first place? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. there's also, is there a baseline of what good teaching is? There's not, because every teacher is different. Mm -hmm. But if a teacher can articulate what they do, why they do, and the results of my students learning this, isn't that good teaching, in my opinion? Mm -hmm. So if you, how can you, I mean, we've all, I've been too, you've all been observed we've been, with a checklist, you know, mm -hmm. and one of them is like teacher-student rapport. What is that? Mm -hmm. You know, does that mean you're, you're a monkey in the classroom running around and say, oh yeah, it's all, he's very good, or hi, how are you? I'm talking about one teacher I know very well, hi, how are you? And you, you think, oh, this guy's dead, and the student's really related to this teacher. Mm -hmm. So you have, must be very careful about what we say with that. So if you try and... You know, so if we re want to, we're replacing one set of checklists that caused the burnout with another set that's going to cause more burnout. Mm -hmm. Am I ta I'm talking too much? <laughs> do, you, do you worry though that that people might look at the the five stages and, yeah. you, and turn that into a checklist? Uh, if they do, well, more luck to them because <laughs> uh, uh, the idea is that you can pick any one of those and stay at them for the rest of your life. I'm mm -hmm. not telling you what to do. I never tell a teacher what to do. I'm thinking. You know, uh, the other day we had, you know, what's a, what a, a teacher is. I don't know if I asked that on Friday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, think so, I never yeah. answered yeah. mine. Will I answer it? <laughs> yeah, we're waiting to, yeah. uh, to hear yeah. you. Well, <laughs> uh, uh, a teacher is a dancer to me. And uh, the idea that is, yeah, I can't teach anything to anybody. I just dance and I enjoy, I, I invite, by the way, I can't dance, but <laughs> I invite you to dance with me. Mm -hmm. And that came mm -hmm. from a, a book called The Dancing Wu Li Masters in Physics, in mm -hmm. which the Wu Li Master, somebody came in and said, teach me Lu Li, which was a Chinese Kung Fu. It's an old book. Uh, Gary, I forget the guy who wrote it. Anyway, and I read it in the year, years and years about quantum physics, which I don't know anything about, and I still don't know anything about, but that part got me. And he's like, no, I can't teach anything to anybody. I, I do my dance, you come join me. And I thought, that is, that's exactly what mm -hmm. it's all about. Mm -hmm. And so... I don't know if you see, I, I have a smile on my face all the time in that because I, I love this stuff, but I, I'm not pushing it on you. I'm, I'm, yeah. And by yeah. the way, it's, it's, it's quite intense, let me tell you. I just finished a class mm -hmm. of, of the whole weekend, and uh, uh, they're exhausted, but I can guarantee. And then I told them, I said, by the way, you're going to have more questions at the end than you did at the beginning. And at mm -hmm. the end, yes, they did have a lot more questions, and that's what it does. It's mm. supposed to generate these questions. Mm, yeah. 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 That's, that's fascinating, because I, I can imagine, like for myself, and I'm sure a lot of other people would have very, very different answers. Good, okay. But, and, but like you said, I think that's great. Yeah. That, and, but it's, it's, it's just fascinating to me that people can take such different perspectives or approaches yeah. or things that engage them about being in the classroom. Yeah, yeah. And they can all be effective teachers. No, definitely, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and but, but, we kind of are becoming more aware of that as teachers. Mm. It's the people outside our mm. profession who control us. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to give a reflective practice workshop to administrators any time. Mm -hmm. I haven't been invited yet. <laughs> but maybe they, they don't want to reflect. But, but that, that's yeah, exactly, you're 100% yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. But most, and by the way, here's another one that's going to throw a bomb and everything. It's like, if people don't, teachers don't engage in reflective practice, it doesn't mean they're bad teachers either. So that's why I'm, I'm, mm, I'm saying mm. that if you do, there's a, after a few years you build a little bit of doubt about what you're doing because it's, you've got, you close that door, there's one of you and 40 or whatever of yeah, them, yeah. and then you've, you know, these classes each week and you're very, we're very busy. And then after a while, you know, if somebody says, well, what are you doing? He says, why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, but, the, but, yeah. but I, I, by the way, the resistance is amazing uh, to, to, to reflection at the very beginning because people are scared. Mm, yeah, I, I felt the other day, actually, in, in your, your talk, just completing that sentence, what's, what's a good teacher? It's a very personal and yes. it opens up a lot of like memories. And yes. Some people don't want to go there. Oh, I, guess, I, so. but yeah. I left out a whole not, lot. Not me, no, particularly. But but I, I left out a whole lot of more questions on that particular exercise. Mm. I was planting the seeds of every part of, of, of the framework. I was a bit worried that I actually did too much because it might be overwhelming for some. But, but at the same time, you're 100% right. And every time I do it, and I'm with you, and I've seen it quite a lot every time, I, mm. even I'm, you know, well, I wonder what it is. And then, 
I actually have to shut myself up. I don't want to say what I think mm. because mm. some people, if they're maybe new or whatever, they'll they'll think, oh, this is correct. No, no, mm. it's not. So, mm. and it is. You're very right. It is very personal. <laughs> and in fact, with the class I was teaching the weekend, I started with the philosophy, and that was really, really heavy, really, because you're. Some people are looking at themselves for the first mm. time, mm -hmm. but my mantra is, who I am is how I teach. And you bring yourself into the classroom. Mm -hmm. You bring it. My suggestion would be, suggestion would be, <laughs> wouldn't it be better to be aware of who you're bringing in to, 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 to teach the students? Yeah. And by the way, your students can see through you. Mm -hmm. They will read you, they can see through you like a book. So, and by the way, they're more, they're more sympathetic than we think. <laughs> right. They like humans. They, yeah. like to be, they like you to be vulnerable. They like you to be, you know, non-expert, no matter what they say. They're, they're still, and, mm -hmm. and by the yeah. way, they just want yeah. to have a lesson. Yeah. There's some yeah, of the yeah. best moments of class when there's some kind of breakdown. The students like that, and they, that's the thing they remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you remember that time you knocked over your coffee? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't want yeah. to remember yeah. that, but, yeah. but yeah. they do. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've been working on a sort of analogy of, of teaching in stand-up stand -up comedy. Yes. <laughs> and I've listened to a podcast. I, I listen to a lot of podcast interviews with stand-up comedians. Yeah. And I, what struck me was how often they would describe a very similar pattern in their careers, which is when they started, they, they, they created a persona. Yes. And they would go up and they would the, everything would be very structured and they had this persona. And then as they, get, as they move through their career, their offstage, their real person, slowly comes on stage. So that the, who they are on stage becomes much more their, who they really are as people. Yeah. And, I, and I think teachers have a very yeah. similar... Yeah. Progression. Well, yeah, I don't know if you've ever heard this, that uh, uh, teachers are generally frustrated comedians. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard that. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. That's a, that was a truism back in yeah. my day. Yeah. But, but also comedians are very depressed, mm -hmm. generally. <laughs> and part of it is because they repress their, their real selves mm. in the room. Mm -hmm. And then there's, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if I mentioned it on Friday, but there's, you know, uh, uh, teaching is a very interesting job. And the reason is, it's the only profession in which we have had a past without ever being a teacher. And that is, uh, uh, Dan Lorty called this apprenticeship of observation. We spend 13,000 hours or more as apprentices watching our teachers in middle school, high school, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and university, and we build up these images about teaching. It's all subconscious, right? And so uh, uh, most people have a Im subconscious image of what a good teacher and a bad teacher is. I'm not saying it's good or right, right or wrong or whatever, but the point is that then they feel that, you know, administrators or parents feel that they have a right to comment on the profession. But the medical profession, unless you've had a sickly childhood, which I hope you haven't, or your parents are doctors, then you generally believe what the medical doctor is saying. A, you don't know what he's saying, or her, or she's saying, so, but you generally tend to believe it because the person is, is, is a qualified doctor. Mm. But... Why don't they believe teachers as well? That's my question. Part of the reason is the doctor will say, well, you're meniscus, I'll you know, give you some medic. But a teacher will say, well, uh, you know, they have a hard time explaining it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tom, thanks for, I mean, as, I, as we said, we didn't really plan anything, but um, I don't okay. think yeah. we needed to, you know, it was, a, yeah, it was great, yeah. Book, yeah. <laughs> if you'd like to. No, 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 no. By the way, before you knock off, uh, I will say that I, I have referenced your work Mm -hmm. in, okay. in a recent book. We, we were aware of that. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. It's up on the shelf. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, I, I, you actually opened me up to other aspects of reflection. And, and mm. I, I have it under kind of the overall term of online reflection. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe yeah. better. <laughs> I don't know what, what to call it, but I, because mm. I, am, I am from the older generation and I'm, I'm a technological idiot. But... but uh, uh, a number of people have been telling me that they've been listening to podcasts, mm -hmm. your podcast, and uh, you're doing a really good job. And so I, I, no, I admire. I hope you keep doing it. That is reflection, actually. Yeah, yeah sure. This yeah. is dialogue, yeah. discussion, and mm -hmm. then you're you're listening, etc. So it promotes it at that particular level. Mm, so yeah, I, yeah. I want to congratulate you guys, and uh, even the cat who's not here, <laughs> if he's listening in. We'll so, and by the way, I, I feel honored that you would actually uh, spend time with. Invite me to spend time <laughs> with you. I'm 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 delighted. Yeah. Oh, so, right. Thank anytime, you very much. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Okay.